Which one do you want to try first? Tribeca. Why do you have them in bags? I, didn't, I don't have them in bags. They came in bags. So oh. right now, that's UK air that's in there. Yeah. Or don't breathe the don't air. Don't breathe the air. I'm, breathe, I'm breathing there. I'm breathing there. Wet Stable Bay beer from the UK Pale Ale Refreshingly Light. Across the pond. With fruity citrus notes. Crack that sucker so, open. Let's okay. try it. I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. John Husk, let's do this. This will be very refreshing. Hope so. I'm parched. How much beer do you want? That's a nice looking color. I don't know. All right, you ready to try this? Huh? Uh, son, are you asking me if I'm ready to try beer? Thank you, John Husk. And, and Noah? Noah. And Noah. Get your reaction first. Mm -mm. <clears throat> you get a grapefruit and you blend the peel. Not the fruit itself. You blend the peel. That's what that <laughs> tastes like. I'm going to say... Ugh. I'm going to disagree 100%. It tastes just like it smells. I'm going to say if I lived there, I would drink the <laughs> of this. Because that is some good stuff. I like I like beer. I like German beer. So mm -hmm. I like beer to have like... A lot of German beer has a little bit of banana, a little bit of spice yeah, in it. Yeah, it kind of tastes with some spice it, ha it almost has a slight German effect to it. Mm -hmm. Just a little bit. Not as heavy as German beer. It really feels like it penetrates the tongue. <laughs> the lengua. <laughs> Wolf Tick Nation, thank you guys for tuning in to once again another Wolf Ticks videos episode. We're glad you guys are here because today's episode, we've got a little bit of uh, business to attend to. First thing we got going on on today's episode, five different viewers rides. Everybody's favorite Cinco. segment. Five, Cinco. You guys are going to like some stuff. We've got some old frames. We've got some new frames. We've got a GT Aggressor Pro in there. We might have an Axum. So make sure you guys stay tuned. Beer. We got some beer. Make sure you guys stay tuned for that. And, God, I'm getting a little woozy over that. My sniffer glass of beer. A little woozy. Man, idiot. once we get done with our viewer's ride segment, we are going to be breaking into the 2021... Or broke into. Yep. Manito Mark War M30 29er Forks Reverse Crown and All. The initial impressions on this fork, we're going to talk about the price. We're going to talk about the steer tube length. We're going to talk about the air that it shipped with. We're going to weigh these suckers. We're going to see how fat these stanchions are. We're going to talk about these forks. It's got some pretty neat stuff on there. And for the price, it damn, it should. It really should. It damn should. It damn should. We are going to be installing those on the all new 2021 Axum DP medium frame. Pretty much the whole front of the Axum DP medium frame is gonna be getting upgraded today, all but the brake and the caliper, and there's more. Berserker! Nick sent us this one up components uh, EDC light bike tool that sits right inside of the stem. Yeah. So it uh, goes right into the steer tube. We're going to try to install this other. Let me know what I'm doing on that. Oh, one thing I want to mention. Whoa. One thing I want to mention. Me. Now, for all you Wolf Tick video fanatics out there, if you, you should be subscribed and you should be notified. Go ahead and like this video while you're at it because you like what you're seeing so far. Because there's a special video coming out Sunday, a bonus video. Just a big thank you to the Wolf Tick Nation. You guys are going to love this video. So make sure you turn notifications on so you stay inside the loop. All right, let's go ahead and break into Viewer's Rides. Well, let's do it. Viewer's Ride. All right, you ready? I'm ready. All right, close your eyes. Okay. Close your eyes. <laughs> Don't start singing, please. Oh. Yeah, how do you like that bike? Shogun? Shogun. Dude. Hoo -ah. Yeah, show me who are. Now, this bike here belongs to. Gate Crasher. This right here belongs to our UK. Hey, you're drinking his beer. This is John oh, Husk's bike. Oh, yeah. man, that's great timing. That was a plan. That was a plan. Unless you John it. Husk. That was this not is planned. John Husk's Shogun Gate Crasher. What a name for a bike. 26 sixer. Hey, man, I, I can't really. I'm not going to say anything bad as the band sent me beer and I'm, I'm enjoying it right mm -hmm. now as we speak. Yeah. Uh, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say this, though. I hope there's more pictures. Oh, there's more pictures. Because yeah. I'm going to start flipping out. It was a three by up front, he said, and uh, used to have uh, V-brakes. So he's got a new fork on there, obviously. Yeah. And uh, I guess there was mounts on the frame for a rear disc. Dude, tell me that don't look like a big BMX style bike. It kind of has that look Dude, to I it. I love it. Man. I love that sticker right there. 26 inch ain't dead. Dude. Isn't that neat? Dude, that is sick, he's man. He's got a, uh, looks like he's got a wake stem on that thing. It, 
Oh man, a Berserker's gonna have to like this. Yeah, bike. you know Berserker likes it. And and Captain, the Captain's Cogs gonna like um, it. It's a RST Blaze Forks. I've never heard of that brand before. Um, his uh, yeah, his group set is a Box Four. Box Four. And uh, it's an eight-speed eleven to forty-two oh, tooth. I was talking to him the other night about Box and uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah the, the what do you call mm -hmm. it, the Acolyte. Look, uh, look at that. Caliper. Look for oh, me. yeah. Uh, yep. They had HB 100s. Yes, exactly. HB 100 calipers. Like he says it's very old. I don't know what year it is, but that, right, that frame, it looks, awesome, like, it looks yeah. timeless. You uh -huh. know what I mean? I mean, pretty cool, I, sweet, Like sweet I build. said, I love the look because it looks like a big BMXer. Mm hmm. Yep. 26. So the bike looks really clean. He's got the FMFX TR crank arms. I'm going with it. Still got a tapered uh, bottom bracket on there. But yep. John Husk, very cool build. Yeah, uh, I like next it. picture you and send. Good beer. Yeah, next picture you send, you need to be holding a beer. All right. What do you think about that? That looks similar what to what, what we're doing right uh -huh. now. That is that a like 2019 uh -huh. Schwinn Axum. Axum with the Manitou fork on uh -huh. it. This belongs to William Sauters. Oh, that's a uh, Yob. Yep, yo, yo Billy, Billy boy. boy. This is his ride. William. I didn't know he had such a cool looking bike. Uh, it's a Will, Schwinn Axum. Bill. Mm -hmm. Frank, Bob, Dick, Richard. Uh, such a cool looking bike. He's got a wake stem on it. Uh, he's got uh, top cabin grips. And a race face ride yeah, 760 some top bar. At one point. What bike are they on? Now 2019 Manitou Mark War. I hope he likes it because we're about to install one on the damn Axum and the, the crown's axum. backwards. <laughs> yeah, they got problems. Look how clean that looks. I accept crank set. Yeah, I was trying to look at that acolyte. That's what I'm talking oh, about. Oh, it's an acolyte. Yeah, acolyte. acolyte. Oh, it is the acolyte. Oh, that's right. He's Ain't nothing one of, wrong he's with one the a... guys that backs me up on the uh, on on the internet. Mm -hmm. sometimes Ain't nothing wrong with the twelve to forty six tooth acolyte. Look how Dude, fat those bars look. Acolyte, man. And you know how old William Saunders is? Uh, I don't usually ask people. He's fifty nine. Is he really? He says that bike. That's his first mountain bike, and he says that thing shreds. I'm sure it does. I would love to get wow. on it and try it. Dude, nice bike. Nice wood. Give us some. Damn, man. I would love to burn that this summer. We live in the damn forest. That's nice wood. That's yeah. nice. Very, Very cool nice. build, man. All right, let's go to the next one. Marvin Blanco. This is his GT Aggressor Pro. I mean, it, I thought we were looking at one of our bikes for uh -huh. a minute. Yeah, it's just all over the place. But, um, uh, this is an older picture. He's done some upgrades I'm going to go with that's one of them Alibaba. Th oh, whoa. We almost had an international incident. Almost elbowed the beer. Fox 32 RL fork. And, oh, is, it, uh, is it the real one then? It's not yeah, the it's a real one. Off and off uh, he says he it needs to be rebuilt. So he like took the decals and stuff off of it mm -hmm. and had it painted. Um, this is his upgraded one by um, IXF crank set. And do you see the amount of chain rings, or chain rings, the amount Ch of chain guides and chain basher guard? I mean, he's, look, dude, Stays if that chain ever falls off. If that chain falls off, something's wrong. I'm going to smack if that, it if your if chain that, never falls off. If that chain falls off, I would leave that some <laughs> where it lies. No kidding, like. man. He's got a lizard skin grips, EC90 carbon bars on that sucker. And he's also upgraded to an Advent X um group set very cool bike mm -hmm. and we've got one more picture from old uh, marvin all right you ready mm -hmm. bam oh what do you think about that oh homeboy was like oh and i sent a picture of one of my uh yeah, salt, you got salt water aquarium Some going on it looks like yeah i mean yeah. that's all coral and stuff in yeah. there and it's funny how like the mountain biking community can be into so many similar things. I wonder what Jack and Dan think about the fish tank. Yeah, I don't know. Let's know Jack and Dan. Yeah, Jack, we need, uh, Dan, either one of you, when you guys see this, whatever, uh, let us know what you think. Let us know. Marvin Blanco, thanks for the bike pics. I like the and fish the tank. And the aquarium pics. Yeah. All right, next, we have got old Bryce Wilson's Family Bikes. I don't know which one that is. Now, he says he's got a... Guys, in order... Comments, let us know in order. Let's see how good you are. Okay. His wife's. That's yeah. his wife's bike. Choices. Very cool looking bike. You know, your wife has good taste if uh, you didn't just do all that stuff to it. <laughs> you know what I mean? But if he did it, she don't have good taste. Well, yeah, no she, good maybe taste. she has good taste because she chose him. I don't know. <laughs> well, Bryce Wilson. I don't know. It's a giant, is that a giant? It looks like giant. These pictures are damn small. Look at that. Can you hell? not zoom in on that? I can. Thank you. Holy. <laughs> All right, so that is his giant first mountain bike. Okay. Okay. I'm going with it. That's his son's. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. Specialized. Yeah. Dude, kids and youth bike look so much cooler than full size bikes. You know. I think it's the ratios to the wheel size, frame size. It just works. Yeah. Better. All right. Next on the viewers' rides, we have got the Jones 
AZ. This is his GT Aggressor Pro. How about the Maxxis tires? Those are Maxxis Minion 2.3 DHS. Is that is is the whole tan walls? Is that DXS. become a is that become a thing or something? I don't know. A lot of people have them now. They yeah. look cool. We got some we have to test. Yeah, but they're um, not I really like the Maxis. look of them. I think they're sweet, and I think they really play off of his fork stanchion color. You know? Yeah. He's got right. a wake stem on there. He's got some PDX pedals, and uh -huh. I do believe old uh, Colin Boren sent us some. Right? Oh, is it the same ones? Uh -huh. Same yeah. exact ones that we've got um, waiting to be put on the Axum, I believe. Yeah, G good old GT. Mm -hmm. Now, one thing I really like about this picture, do you see the water bottle? Do you remember he sent us the Wolf Tick video ideas? The symbols, see WTV, and that's a wolf, and that's a tick. Oh, damn! Wolf tick okay, yeah, that's pretty us some damn stuff cool. Back. Yeah, yeah, I like that. Seven mm eighties -hmm. is what he's running. On wow, the bars. he likes the wide bars. Yeah, I'm sure. I mean, damn, things are wide. He must be mm -hmm. a big dude. That looks like a large frame. He's got Cycling Hero 32 120 millimeter forks. What oh, I see a full suspension. Uh, what is that? Cheating? It's a Huffy. Are you cheating on the GT? All right, come on. I see the Huffy back there, Jones. I do like that angle. I like that shot. Mm -hmm. Something different. It's a little more artistic, oh, if you will. It's a medium. Look, see the M on yeah, the GT? Yeah, I told you. It's a medium the frame. frame. Okay. Yeah, so it's the same I want that's an EC90C. Anyway, very cool build. I like all the blue accents. The Jones anyway. AZ. I love the sticker uh, emblem thing. That's yeah, pretty that's damn cool. Pretty I like your GT a lot, too. All right, guys. So we appreciate everybody sending in the pictures for the viewer's ride. Some pretty cool rides. Five of them. That's a special. Um, now, uh, one thing I wanted to talk about real quick. On the uh, giveaway that we just had, our 9,000 subscriber giveaway, we had some uh, Geo handguards, our pals at Geo, and we had some Kemi Moto pedals. Now, the guy who won these pedals, old John Day, says, Guys, I was really hoping to get the Geo handguards, and it's not that I don't want the pedals. He said, For the last 25 years, I've been riding clip in pedals, I believe. Or, or it could be clipless, but the kind that you. The it, kind that you yeah. have the funky shoe. Anyway, yeah. John Day says, uh, Can you have kids 12 years and under 12 years and send under. in viewers' rides? Then you guys pick out five or so, and then the Wolf Tick Nation decides. Votes on it. Votes. Which one is the coolest looking bike? And that kid, 12 years younger, will win these Kemi Moto pedals. So we said, man, that'd be cool to do. Uh, if you are 12 years and younger and uh, it's cool with your parents or if your parent is watching, do you guys want a chance to win some Kemi Moto pedals? And have your bike featured on a viewer's ride segment. Mm -hmm. The whole nation's going to vote on it. Let us know, John Day. Thank you for the idea. Now, guys, what do you say we get into a little uh, Manitou initial impressions fork I'm install? I'm Manitou now. Manishu. Uh, fork install and uh, let's get to looking at those things a little bit. Alright guys, let's go ahead and go over everything that we're going to be installing on the Axum today and then once we get done talking about all the goodies over here, we're going to be talking about that main man, the uh, Manitou fork. We're going to, uh, of course, weigh it, talk all about it, take some measurements on it. Let's talk about this Zitto headset. This is a sealed bearing headset. You can get this for about $20 on Amazon and it's a 44 to 55 millimeter and uh i think the axon is a 44 to 56 whoa, 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 whoa. we'll find it's out a 44 to 55 yeah it says 44 to 55 dash 56 so i'm just gonna put what that what the hell does that mean i don't know it's a trip so that's the headset we're going to be installing today with our homemade tools we also are going to be putting on this yf mountain bike seat that our boy uh, Hobby Hob 1269 sent us they sent us a seat so awesome also going to be installing this buck -los bar. Loose. Buck loss. This is a 780 millimeter bar. It's a flat bar as you can see. And I want to go with something like this. So, I mean, Bucklow sent this to us. It's a $26.99 bar. But I wanted to go, uh, we were kind of waiting on what project to put this bar on. And I think that the Axum is going to be perfect just because uh, the bar that's on it right now is flat. You liked it. And I like it. You know, the only thing I'm not sure on, you can see these uh, little measurement lines there. I'm thinking that we might cut it down if it feels too long because the one on the Axum I think is like a 760. Uh, this is going to be a recycled item. This is a zoom downhill 50 millimeter with a 30 degree rise stem. Now this is a little bit heavy. I did have this on the GT Aggressor Pro and I took it off when we went to the 35 millimeter stamp and bar, um, clamp and bars, stem and bars. 35 millimeter. We're going to do a weight comparison too on what uh, the bike started with and then how much we've lost. Uh, now, in the grip department, these are my favorite grips ever. If you have been watching the channel, you know all about the Race Face Half Nelsons. You can get these suckers here for about 20 bucks. We'll put some affiliate links below. And uh, our boy Paul in Las Vegas, Viva Las Vegas, sent us these red Race Face grips. I love them. They're thin, they're sticky. 
Uh, and there's only one side that gets locked on. All right, and then uh, before we get to the fork, we've got one more. This is a one-up components EDC light black, um, pretty much like light a. Black? Well, that's the name of it, light black. It's pretty much a uh, all-in-one tool that we're going to be installing as well. Been waiting on the build to put this on. You can get this for around forty-five dollars. Berserker Nick, uh, one of our <laughs> Berserker Nick, one of our big supporters of the channel, sent this to us a while back, and uh, you can see here. It's pretty cool. It just slips right off the top. Okay. And then you pull this little cap off there. If you can see that cap, we pull that off there. And we've got like a little array of different tools, a little little bitty multi-tool all in your stem cap, you know? And uh, obviously you don't have to have any tools to be able to pull this thing out. I got to set the star nut and it does come with a long bolt. I'm thinking that's to set the star nut. I'm not too sure. And then we'll drill that right into the star nut. But anyway, so that's all we're going to be putting on the axum. Um, besides the fork. Now, let's get to the fork. We'll start doing some measurements on it, see how much air is in it, yeah. weigh it, all the good stuff. Okay. Okay. Let's go ahead and get to the main event of the evening. So we have got the Manitou Markor M30 100 millimeters of travel Manitou Minutia fork. 100, yeah, it's a 100 millimeter travel. And the very cool thing about this fork, now this is an expensive fork. It's definitely not budget. This fork. It's not, it's not expensive. It's in that next tier up. This fork, I wrote it down. Oh. $200. And $79 for this fork. We've always talked about $200 being the top of the line for a budget fork. At least we think so here. Something I think everybody can afford, at least if they save up to. So $80 more, if you kind of look at it that way, for a fork of this magnitude, or what's supposed to be. Um, I guess it's not too bad. Uh, something I really like about it already is it doesn't have a big old massive 15 millimeter through axle on this damn thing. Yeah. I, I mean, I love that That's about this fork. I mean, definitely a selling feature. You're able just to put it from bike to bike with our budget channel with the original wheel set, you know, at least uh, with a nine millimeter quick release. But that's pretty cool. Well, you could do a bolt on. Yeah, or the bolt on. Yeah. But um, anyway, well, what do you uh, say we start getting into the specs of these yeah, things? Yeah, I'm, I'm ready. But very good looking for. I'm ready for some specs. All right, let's do the specs. Steer tube length is right at nine and three quarter inches. Yeah, that's shorter than usual. All right, let's look at the uh, stanchion width. Stanchion width is right at 30.04. 30.04. Yeah, is that where the M30 comes from? What's up with all these forks and it's not having, 30. you know, having a 28 or 30 or a 30? I mean, I, I want a damn big old fat, nasty 34 or 32. It's a 30. Yeah, well, you want to pay more then. No, I don't want to pay more. Let's go ahead and do the stanchion length. Now, this is the amount of travel that it has. If you guys know the channel, we're just uh, measuring how much stanchion is showing. Now, on this fork, it's got a crazy... Um, design here if you can see it kind of comes down to a point on that stanchion so i'm guessing that's the lowest point so we're going to measure from that point all the way to the uh, top of the seal here now again not the travel but just a measurement for it yeah okay it is right at 103.63 millimeters stanchion length 103.63 103.63 millimeters. Now, was this advertised as 120 or 100? 100. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay, so it was advertised as 100 millimeters. So, I mean, I guess if it gets full squishy all the way up to up here, then I, I guess we're solid on that. Um, let's go ahead and check the pressure that the fork's got. You see that? Isn't that a trip? It doesn't have like a big old cap cover oh, yeah. over the top. Uh -huh. It's just got a little bitty uh, valve cover. That's kind of weird. And the uh, fork does have a uh, pressure chart. 90 pounds of pressure. Okay, so 90 PSI? Yep, 90 PSI. 90 to 110 PSI is for riders that are 200 pounds. Kind of seems a little light in the air department, doesn't it? Probably keep it at 90. Sweet so, um, yeah, probably keep it at 90. Uh, now, let's go ahead and check this thing out a little bit. So, we've got the lockout and the little compression knob up here. And this right here feels so freaking smooth, man. Uh, one thing that's interesting too with this cap is it looks like it's set up for a remote. Do you see that? Or you can run a remote. Yeah. Yeah, so you can, it's remote ready, it looks well, like. So that's kind of cool. Like. I know like Rock Shocks, you have to buy a separate cap, you know, if you want to run a remote, if it's compatible with it. Uh, now here is Wait, the... We're just guessing. Yeah, we're guessing. We're not professionals. Now here's the rebound knob. And the rebound knob 
is nice and smooth, but again, there's no clicks. But I will say at least it's not like most forks where you can spin and spin and spin. Yeah. It's it, just basically there, but, all the but way there. It so it has an indicator of kind of where you get an idea of where it's set, right? Yeah. Like so you can you yeah, can it's make got little, the little adjustments and know where you're at. Yeah, it's got the little indicator on there, exactly. So we can make little adjustments. Looks, and I like the way it sits up in there so it's not sticking out to get knocked off. Yeah, it is tucked under there pretty neat. Now one thing that I'm not really digging about this fork is look at that. I mean you know, I, it looks like somebody was putting together a damn gate, and they're like, "Hey, let's put that let's put that bolt on there." Did you address the elephant in the room? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Now let's address this. Now, what the hell is up with that arch being on the back of the fork? Now everybody says, "Oh man, it does so good whenever you're riding, and it's just such a superior design for strength and durability." I don't They're know about that. The stanchions is what they you're protecting the stanchion from mud getting flung up. I don't know about that. First of all, you were adamantly opposed. Oh, I'm opposed to it. Oh. Yeah, I'm not saying I don't know how. To, I just I'm opposed to that. Look how ugly that looks. It's gonna look funny as hell when it's on the bike and there's nothing up here. Everybody says you'll get used to it. I guess if I don't look down, I might get used to it. That's just weird looking. Let us know in the comments. Are you for it or against it? You like it or not. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, let's get this thing up on the scale and let's see how much this puppy weighs. Let's see what we got here, baby. I'm going like three something, I'm man. I'm going right at four. This thing is light. Go. Oh, 3.96. Wow. I called that crap. Wow, I called it. No, you didn't. I called it. Okay, so 3.96 pounds. Pretty damn light for a fork, especially a 29er fork, isn't it? I mean, I mean, yeah. Look, I'm not. I think the weight's decent. Yeah, but I, I said it was at four pounds. Yeah, I think it's and a really it's decent right weight. at four pounds. Yeah. So I'll tell you guys what we're gonna do. I've already went through all of the work, and I already tore down the bars and the fork and the brake lines and the wheel off of the axle. I went through, got all stripped down. I haven't got the headset out yet. We're gonna do that. All right, headset time. Now this is a uh, good old homemade tools on this budget channel. And the great thing about my budget tools is this headset. Um, pusher outer. This thing right here works with a tapered or straight steer tube. There we go. Look at Mr. Foot. Jeez, that sucker was in there. He came out with some force. Yeah. Oh, right, we did good though. Okay. Now let's go ahead and uh, yep, set. Let's go ahead and set this new Zitto headset. I hope this headset fits good. I'm a little concerned. All right, so a while back when we did the, um, the fragments thing. headset, we had the same problem where the bottom cup was loose, right? And uh, no top cup was the top one mm -hmm. where it was loose and it's supposed to be a 34 millimeter, but again, it was off, similar to this one here. So what we're gonna do. Everybody said, uh, well, whenever that happens, all you have to do is put a little bit of uh, electrical tape around there. You can't even tell. A little tighter. It still just kind yeah. of pops in there, but at least it stays now. Yeah, I mean, it's good and snug. We're just going to keep it yeah, like that. That's good okay, me. now let's go ahead and get our top cut. All right, now that was the Getter Dunn Jones of uh, headset putting on. Uh, got a little hairy there, but nothing that a little hammer action wouldn't fix. So, what we're going to do now is uh, I'm going to take this all thread out. I'm going to have to get me a new piece. And let's go ahead and jump over to that fork. We're going to measure out and see. Uh, we're going to have to cut that steer tube down. And hopefully that goes smoother. So let's go ahead and uh, install the fork on the bike. We got to put that whole headset together, grease it up really well. We're gonna set that star nut, and then we're gonna see if we can uh, kind of test fit the um, that one up deal. All right, so uh, we got some spacers in here, as you can see. Somebody didn't want to cut this shorter. No. Nope. Now this is what we're gonna do. Here's the one up housing, basically for that tool. You can see here, it's got the little uh, bolt there. It's got the little bolt there to uh, go to your star nut. We gotta drop that in there like so. So this will actually seat up to the top of this spacer. So that's what we kinda want to keep that um, compression. So what I'm going to do is I've already got the bolt that it comes with with the star nut on the end that the uh, headset came with. All right, so what I'm gonna have to do is basically just start hammering the sucker in there. I have a, a headset tool, but it will not go that deep.
Okay, so we got the bars, the brakes, the headset, the stem, everything installed on the bike. And we're fixing to get this fork, the Manito Markor M30. We're fixing to play with it, get that on there and try the suspension out, kind of see what he thinks about it. But uh, we've also got the one up. I mean, look how easy I just pulled that thing out. This little one up multi-tool that fits into that steer tube. That thing is cool as crap. Let's weigh this thing. Oh. Forgot to weigh this thing. Let's weigh this thing. I'm trying to hold the camera and hold the brake. Now I'm holding the bike. Oh, damn it. 34.50 pounds. All right, so. Okay. Well, I think that's about is. two or three pounds. I don't know. I don't have the weight on me. Oh, you look all crazy right now. I don't have the weight on me. Yeah. <laughs> but guys, let's go ahead and get Dad on there and let's uh, let's play with these forks a little let's bit and then we'll do the outro. There. Let's try these puppies out. All right, so we are rebound positive, all the way positive. 90 pounds of pressure okay. with uh, open compression. Go ahead. Okay. Oh. Oh. Oh, that's smooth, buddy. It's, 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 wait, hang on. Oh, it, it's getting smoother. Oh, it's, it's getting smoother. It's, pre, it's pretty smooth. Pretty smooth. Pretty okay. Now we're going to go a quarter towards the slow, or it's towards the minus. Okay. Okay. A little faster. All right, there's three quarters. I can tell it jumping up already. Mm -hmm. You can hear them smoothing out. And there is full fastest reset back. Yeah. Yeah, go full the other way. Okay. Yeah, okay. I don't think, I, I'm going to say this right now. I like the forks that oh, just about suck that son of a gun where it won't come out. <laughs> the Wolfman first impression is not the greatest of adjustments. Okay. Well, uh, we got to break these things in still. So we're going to be doing a real time review, so make sure you guys don't miss it. All right. Now, lockout is on. It's kind of, it's kind of in the middle. It's like, it sounds like it's, it's messing itself. You know, <laughs> when you get that bad diarrhea and you accidentally, and, you know. Yeah, it's, it's, so it's not it, a full lockout, but it's... It's not completely fully locked out, but it is enough yeah. to where... I mean, this, this it's good. The lockout's good. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say yeah. the lockout is a, like a B. Okay, lockout's a B. All right, guys, we will catch you on the next one. And uh, all you 12-year-olds and younger out there that ride and have yeah. a viewer's ride that you want to show off and a chance to win and get voted on some Kemimoto pedals. Make sure you guys uh, check with your parents, see if you guys can send us a picture. Your parents can send, you, send us a picture of your ride. And uh, remember, Wolf Tech Nation is going to be doing a vote. Thanks to John Day, he won them. So yeah, we want to give away. John Day on that. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, um, everything went together smooth, man. I'm happy about it. Make sure you guys stay tuned for the real-time review. We will catch you on the next do the, one. Do the 12-year-olds have to be in the picture to be decide? Yeah. <laughs>